That's cool. It's the original old metal grill that's sat in the 50s and Marion Kaiska took it with her when she left because she paid for it. <laughs> This recording service, commonly known now as Sun Studio. So these guys got the break: Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, the main man, Roy Orbison, countless others. Not quite as illustrious, but uh, as the Million Dollar Quartet. Sam C. Phillips recording studio by 1960. Sam had outgrown his original studio here and opened a new store, new state of the art facility, one block away, 639 Madison. This three story building housed two studios, two echo chambers, a tape vault, multiple wet bars, and Phillips' new office on the top floor. Still a functioning studio operated by the Phillips family. The location has hosted notable artists including Dylan, the Yardbirds, Phil Collins, The Cramps, Alex Chilton, Robert Plant, John Prine and, th and 3-6 Mafia. One of the biggest hits to come out of the new studio was by Sam the Sham the Pharaohs. Oh, Wooly Bully. That's the new studio. It's not, not far from here in Madison. We went there last time we were here. But outside it anyway. The original old metal grill that sat in the 50s, and Marion Kaiska took it with her when she left because she paid for it. <laughs> yeah, why not? And there's Alex's first this demo. This was Taylor's Cafe. So the Sun Studio Cafe. So this had rooms upstairs where the musicians uh, from the studio next door could come and stay. Oh, there's a sign for Taylor's restaurant that this originally was. Oh, there is Taylor's Fine Foods. That's how it originally, well of course that picture is very 70s. Yeah, so this is the office, it's a Memphis Court service coming through the front door there. Mario Kaiska will be sitting at the desk.
original studio. I don't know if you can feel the vibe and the energy when you walk through the door, but I feel it every single time. So everything in here, awesome man. Uh, everything in here construction wise is original. So that means the floor tiles you're standing on are the same ones that they stood on. The wall panels are the same. Marion and Sam put those up. Sometimes they fall off. You just gotta plop them back up there. <laughs> We had Elvis, Scotty, and Bill in this room that very first time. Uh, Sam told us where they were standing that night, so we believe him. We marked some spots. They're kind of worn out. But there's an X right there for Scotty. That's you, sir. Thank you. You're the guitarist. He doesn't want to be, but uh, Bill Black, the upright bass player. He has an X right there, whoever wants to be Bill. And then, ladies and gentlemen, the king of rock and roll, Mrs. Elvis Presley. There she is. Uh, Sam Phillips, he's of course back here in the control room listening to what they're playing. You know, it's their first time in here all together. Scotty and Bill were actually in their own country band together back then. They are called the Starlight Wranglers. Elvis, he's trying very hard to follow along with what they're doing, but he doesn't know their songs. That goes on for about an hour. <laughs> Sam's not impressed, but he is being nice. He said, okay guys, why don't you just take a break? So Elvis took his break, but he knew. He's probably about to get kicked out of here, so everything that he was about to do was just kind of more out of nervous energy. So he comes in here, but he's very shaken up. He really just starts to dance around the room, shaking his arms, his legs, his hands. He's not really even by the microphone anymore, but he was singing under his breath one of his favorite songs. It's an obscure blues song by a man named Arthur Big Boy Crudup. The title is, That's Alright Mama. <laughs> so if there's anything we know about Sam, what is it? He's into the blues, and he hasn't heard Elvis sing the blues, and that's a very obscure song for Elvis to even know then. So now, Sam's extremely impressed. His eyes bulge out of his head. He runs through the door. He comes in. He really just starts yelling at Elvis. Elvis, is that you? <laughs> so Sam, he ran straight back into his control room, <laughs> hit record, and Elvis, Scotty, and Bill recorded their own version of That's Alright in just two takes. Elvis, he comes back in here, starts to record songs for Sam the way that Sam likes. The songs are becoming huge around town, around the region. Elvis, Scotty, and Bill ended up putting out five records together on the Sun label, all double-sided, so 10 actual songs here on Sun. Sam does end up selling Elvis's contract to RCA Victor for $35,000. <laughs> but yeah, you have to remember, it's a lot of money back then. It was actually the most amount paid for a single recording artist at that time. So. Uh, Sam called it his greatest business decision. He said it was only him and Marion, so now he could start hiring employees. So without that sale, we may have never heard of some people like Roy Orbison or Jerry Lee Lewis or Carl Perkins or Johnny Cash, Conway Twitty, Charlie Feathers, Charlie Rich, the list goes on. All those guys had their start here as well. So if you think about it, it wasn't that bad of a trade-off, you know, at least for us. Let's talk about Roy Orbison real quick. I know we got some Roy fans in here, right? Yeah, he has such a beautiful voice. Uh, he had quite a few rockabilly hits on the Sun label. I'm going to play one and see if anybody can name this one. And actually, I forgot to tell y'all where we were upstairs. It used to be, it was another, another address up there in the 50s. It used to be a boarding house. There were four rooms in there, and that's where Roy would stay when he recorded here. So you guys all stood in Roy's room. Mr. Carl Perkins, smiling very big in the picture because Sam had just bought him a brand new Cadillac for selling the very first gold record for the Sun label, which was a million copies back then. So that's a huge deal for a label starting out, Phil. I know somebody in here knows the name of the song. You can yell it out if you want to. That's right, Blue Suede Shoes. Carl Perkins wrote Blue Suede Shoes, and he performed it first. He actually had a bigger hit with it than Elvis did in those days. Cool. All right, I know we got some Johnny Cash fans in here, right? Yeah. Few of you? Cool, so his picture's up there. Um, when Johnny first came in here, he had a job as being an appliance salesman, and he wasn't good at this job. <laughs> uh, the entire time he worked for the home equipment company here in Memphis, he sold one appliance, and it gets worse, it was sold to Marion. <laughs> I felt sorry for him, she bought a television from him, but he's a much better musician, and he had the most consecutive hits for the Sun label, with songs like Cry Cry Cry, Hey Porter, Get Rhythm, Folsom Prison, Big River, I Walk the Line, all done right here in this room. And I am going to show you guys a cool trick that Johnny did when he first came in here. He also did not have a drummer in his band in the really early days. so. When he started to book some live shows, he got creative. He wanted a drum sound. What he would do is he would take his guitar, I'm gonna hang out on the chair real quick. He would take his guitar and take a piece of paper or a dollar bill like we have in this one, weave it through the strings over under, hold the strings on the neck really tight and strum it. 
and it kind of resembles a snare drum a little bit. And I'm going to show y'all what I'm talking about, but I'm going to play a song in the background. Because you're mine, I walk the line. Good job, guys. I heard y'all. <laughs> Actually, it does sound better, though, if y'all put a 20 in it, just so you know. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to direct your attention over here to the really big picture, which a lot of you probably know something about. But the picture was taken on December 4th, 1956. We got Elvis at the piano, Johnny Cash behind him, Carl Perkins is in the middle, Jerry Lee Lewis is on the left. This night was actually one of Carl's sessions. Jerry Lee was only a session musician at this time. He was getting paid $15 a day to play piano on Carl's song. So he wasn't really too well known quite yet. Sam called Johnny and he called up the local newspaper and he got him to come take a picture. So the next day, the newspaper it read Million Dollar Quartet right above it as the headline. So now they're all in here. It didn't happen very often with all of them in here at the same time. They're hanging out, jamming out, two and a half, three hours. But Sam knows it's Lawsuit City if you attempt to record somebody who's on another label, especially Elvis. So Sam made a wise decision to go ahead and record it anyways. <laughs> And Sam did keep this a secret. It actually wasn't released until he passed, which was in 2003. So extremely recent since we've had the full recording of that. <laughs> All right, so that kind of brings us to what we're doing today. So real quick, Sam, he stopped taking his loan on the building. He never owned this building, by the way. He just had a lease here. So he stopped using the space in 59 took it back a couple blocks behind us on Madison Avenue where the trolley tracks run and opened another recording service. It's much bigger, it's much more state of the art. And he ran the label out of there until 69. And then he did eventually sell the label in 69 to a man in Nashville. So the label, it still exists, but it's in Nashville. We're only a recording studio here. They're only a recording studio there, but it made this room be empty.